I think in all great storytelling, and this is something that the classical world does afford us in adaptation, is that we know the ending. You know, not a lot of surprise in the class. We've been telling the story for 2,000 years. It's not a ton of surprise. And so oftentimes in 21st century storytelling where there's so much obsession over the reveal of new information at the end of a piece. You know, if you think about any movie by Christopher Nolan, um, so uh, such a huge part of their storytelling machinery is surprise. And I personally think, and I think Aristotle agrees with me, that surprise is like the lowest form of catharsis. Like of, of all the types of catharsis that you could have in the theater, surprise you know, it can only happen once. I can only surprise you once. But in the Iliad, you know how it ends. Or even in Hamlet, you know how Hamlet ends. We don't go to the theater to discover, to find out what happens to Hamlet. We go to the, we go to the theater to watch the process. Um, and in adapting the classical world, that's part of, we, the audience knows how the story's gonna end. And so it forces us as the storyteller to let go of the conventions of surprise and create stories that are worth watching the, the process, the trajectory of these characters over a given set of space and time. Possibly, but I actually think that the audience members, the audience will come if they believe in the story. As long as, if I can convey to you the humanity of the story, then you'll come. Like, I think there, I think that, um, I think that what often turns audiences off about coming to see pieces about the classical world is their, is their memory of seeing it done poorly more than the story itself. If you think about it, and I don't mean to throw anybody under the bus online, but if you think about, um, like there was a version of Hercules that came out a couple years ago that was abysmal. And, um, and there was a period of time, in like, the, like from 2008, really kind of like after 300 was such a success, there was a period of time where there was like, you know, the Wrath of the Gods and the Clash of the Gods remakes and all that, like where it became, a, where that kind of storytelling was just an opportunity for us to use CGI and to see magic and, and mythological creatures in a different setting that was relatively devoid of human um, of uh, character development. And so if you like the classical world like me and you're gonna kind of sit through anything just to see what happens, then you're like, yeah, all right, that wasn't a great experience, but I got to sort of live in this world that, that sits only lip breathes in, in my imagination. Um, but if you are the general population, you begin to have this connotation that, oh, movies about the classical world really don't mean anything. Like they're just CGI, you know, extravaganzas that really don't tell me anything that I really need to know. Um, and I think it's our job as um, creators that use the classical world to combat that by using the classical world to tell compelling stories. You will come, I promise. And you, if, if, you know, a great salesman could sell a, a popsicle to a, you know, a red popsicle to a bride on her wedding day. Like, it's sort of like, you know, it's not what keeps people from um, engaging with the classical world is us. That's it. It's not the text. I think that's a fundamentally important lesson for anybody who's thinking about creating what the classical world must understand. It's not the text that's inaccessible. It's us. We have to be the proper conduits to use adaptation like we were talking about and to use the audience's expectation of the material as much as the source material to create experiences to honor the spirit of what these texts are trying to do and not get lost in the nuts and bolts of well this isn't exactly right you know and there's a line to cross there too you don't you, if you're going to just throw all the rules of the classical world out, then why are you using the classical world to begin with? So I am not, I don't want you to think that I'm advocating, you know, for free adaptation where anything goes. That's not, you know, you have, you have a responsibility as the artist to walk that line. Um, and if you can walk it well, then you will be able to do it. I believe it.